All right. <clears throat> one, two, three. One, two, three. All right, let's uh, continue on our story. And here is part two of Let's Play Breath of Fire. In the last episode, we freed a kingdom from a frog, so now we gotta move forward. And yes, Breath of Fire 1 has a day-night cycle, which doesn't really get utilized too much. I mean, the day-night cycle is cool and all, but very few events um, utilize it. This is probably the only one that really utilizes the day-night cycle as a plot point. Well, there's another event, but... There's only like three events that use the day-night cycle to advance the plot, and that's... that's it. Alright. Fighting Fleas. enter at night and cool uh yeah certain chat certain um drawers and that will give you items when you loot them seriously the guards here are pretty dumb those two guards not see me. I was right in their line of sight. one is this guy right here who's staring at me as I go down around the dock. store that works in this town.
Oh, hey. got dumb guards. I mean, I'm just gonna say it out loud. The Dark Dragons have really dumb guards. <laughs> Ineptitude plus five. doesn't look ominous at all. Another antidote. Alright. Oh yeah, the one thing I liked about Breath of Fire 1 is the battle map changes whenever, depending on where you are when you um, encounter a battle, instead of just a static uh, dungeon map, dungeon uh, background like most RPGs did in the day. So that's neat. Strength up. Yeah, I think. Yeah, strength is my physical attack. Vigor is my physical defense. Agility is my speed. Wisdom is my magic. Luck is luck. And like I said, magic is pretty much useless because all the spells do set damage. you want to explore uh, the dungeon as much as possible because there are sometimes items you want. items where you can use them to mimic a spell in battle and you will get sick of them because at this point in the game they're godsent 
but when you're still collecting them at the end of the game, it's just added inventory space they're taking up. Goodness for the auto battle system. Well, that gets annoying. Like I said, the magic stat is useless, but hey, an upgrade is an upgrade. that the gloom was uh, casting on me, it will always do a set 12 damage, <clears throat> regardless. So, yeah. That's why I try to kill the glooms first. that in order to exit the menu, it was just one button push, as opposed to like 12 or 13. fights. So, 
to let you know how, I guess, bad this boss fight is, the frog had about 200-ish HP. This guy has over 300, close to 400. These items come in handy. major issues with the boss fights in this game is the fact that they're not overly difficult. They're just... They're just uh, damage sponges most of the time. As long as you know, like, how the turns go and what to do, there's very little strategy. And later on in the game... All strategy goes out the window, really. Kinda looks like he's uh, flipping off the guy, but he's trying to recover himself. By the way, again, I'm fighting the Dark Dragon Clan. Keep in mind, in this entire game where you're supposed to be fighting the Dark Dragon Clan, you only fight two dragons. Are you going to start spamming your heal spell? that question. to the lady in the armory that was there. You gave up Nanai to destroy the forces of the Dark Dragons. It was a tough choice to make, but the results show that you are a true hero. I mean, I had to kill an innocent merchant. In fact, there wasn't really much choice in the matter.
Well, now it's destroyed. Gain is the E key. Or Earth key. And it does a set 30 damage to all enemies on the battlefield. And it's a key item, so you cannot get rid of it. to it because there's going to be a lot of items where they're just going to take up room in your inventory. there was an effect to that, but... Oh well. Nothing major like raising your stats or something, but even just some flavor text. You know, somebody saying, like, if they liked it or not. sign don't work. There's the storage room and bank. So you can deposit items in here for just to get some storage space. You can also deposit your gold here so when you get wiped out you don't lose half your money. And trust me, you do not want to lose half your money when you wipe out. They 
the fish and the fruit. But then again, it's not like money isn't hard. Money's not hard to come by. Just because of the high encounter rate. I mean, later on, a lot of enemies will drop, like, large amounts of gold, so... You don't really run into money issues that much in this game. Although... I don't like how empty a lot of the houses are. If you're gonna actually put houses in here, you know, have at least one or two NPCs in them. Talk to the king. Huh. I once heard of a hero who could turn into a dragon. Pretty cool, huh? Because I know this should be Nina talking, but a, a little bit of, you know, a little bit of t uh, telling me how wh who's talking is a good thing. changes from the main character to Nina. And... I mean, 
hey, you're the princess. If she can't raid her own castle, who can? Talk to Ryu while he's asleep. Pretty neat, huh? Alright, this is gonna be slow, so I'm gonna do this. is one of those characters where you should raise her agility as much as possible, but it does not matter. Her agility does not matter for two reasons. Um, one, um, she's still very agile despite wearing heavy equipment. And two, her spells always go first. All of her healing spells go first, so... Alright, well, I'm gonna end things here, and when we get back, I am going to do Nina's scenario. So, let's see how that goes. Later, guys! <laughs>